And to those of you who observe Lent, have, I hope you're having a blessed and happy Lent so far. I'm actually filming this on Ash Wednesday. I'm on my way to go pick up the baby and go to Mass, so that's my, why my face is still clean. Um, I've done a few of these videos before, and I'm going to go ahead and create a playlist and link that at the end. So if you're interested um, in a sort of nebulous series of somebody who doesn't know what they're really talking about, talking about church stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm speaking with zero authority here, but I love my Catholic faith and I love talking about it. So today I wanted to tell you about Ash Wednesday and Lent, what they are, in case you weren't aware, um, to sort of clear up perhaps some misconceptions and stuff because I think it's fascinating. So um, this all starts from a movable feast thing where there's certain feast days in the church that don't fall on particular calendar days, um, and Easter is one of those. So Easter falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the first day of spring. So that means that there's like a full moon during Holy Week every year and that the range of dates for Easter uh, lasts about a month depending on when the full moon is. So uh, then the period of 40 days before Easter is called Lent. Um, fun fact, it's, I believe, and I have to double check this, it's 40 days not counting uh, not counting Sundays, but it does count, I think it counts the triduum, if you know what that means, kudos. Uh, I believe it counts the triduum, even though tr the triduum isn't really technically Lent, so it's a little confusing. But it's 40 days uh, before Easter, and it's a period of like preparation, similar, I talked did a video about Advent, it's similar to that, uh, where you in prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to prepare yourself for the death and resurrection of Jesus in that celebration. So Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. Um, there are two days in the church year where we're required to fast, meaning, well, technically what that means is two very small meals, like two snacks and a larger meal that's like a normal size meal. Um, it can also mean like whatever wanted to mean that's less than that you know I when I was younger I used to like super hardcore hardcore mode it and I would basically eat nothing um I feel like there were years that I didn't even drink water which is not smart you should drink water um <laughs> but you're not required to fast if you're very young like very young children the elderly and then pregnant and nursing moms are not required to fast it was so weird for me last year because I was pregnant last year and I, like I said, had always been like super hardcore about my fasts and eating nothing. And I usually have a pretty high uh, hunger tolerance anyway. Um, so I just ate like nothing. I would eat one, I would eat dinner. Uh, that was how I grew up is I, I only ate dinner. Um, and so last year I didn't fast because I wasn't required to and because I knew it was better for my health and the health of the baby to actually eat something. Um, and again, this year I was thinking like, well, you know, I'm not pregnant, should I? But then I read an article that was like, you really should eat something because, you know, it's it's for the, um, the nutrients of the milk and the breastfeeding and it's just, it keeps up your strength and it's important for your health and the baby's health. So uh, today I, I made myself this morning two peanut butter sandwiches and I cut them in half. And so I had one half for breakfast, one half for lunch, and I'm going to share the second sandwich with the baby for dinner. Um, so super basic. The uh, days, the, second, the other day that you're supposed to fast is Good Friday, which is the day Jesus died. And on those days, as well as other Fridays in Lent, uh, you participate in what's called abstinence, which means eating no meat. Um, for tradition reasons, I guess, fish counts and you can eat fish and it's fine. Um, there are actually some dioceses where like certain animals are ex exempted. Like I think, I feel like there's a diocese somewhere where puffin counts as a fish, um, even though it's a bird. And I think there might be a diocese in like Florida where maybe alligator counts as a fish for purposes. Anyway, so on Ash Wednesday, if you have Catholic friends, you've probably seen they post their hashtag, hashtag, um, and basically you get ashes on your forehead um, to remind you, it's like the, the biblical th tradition of putting on sackcloth and sitting, in, sitting sackcloth and sitting in the ashes 
to uh, symbolize that you were in, like in mourning for your sin, you're repentant. And so that's what we do. We're like, remember, unto you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. You're a sinner. It's time to repent. And so that's what, uh, it's like a kickoff for Lent and the different things that you want to give up. Like I said, prayer, fasting, almsgiving. It's good to take a practice um, to give up something you like. Start doing a practice that um, is beneficial. Like, So I give up radio and stuff in the car usually. And then instead of doing that, I pray in the car, or I try to. Um, and so it's like giving up a, ba a bad or neutral thing, that, or maybe something that's like distracting you from your prayer life, and then replacing it with something that's good. Um, you know, giving your time, talent, and treasure, or praying more, and praying more. <laughs> Fun fact, a lot of people don't know that Ash Wednesday is not a holy day of obligation. I did another one of these videos about holy days uh, check out that playlist at the end of the video. You are not required to go to Mass on Ash Wednesday, but it's one of those days that a lot of people try to. Um, they really like to go to Mass on Ash Wednesday, and it's a good thing to do. Obviously, it's always good to go to Mass. Um, it, people kind of joke that like people like to go to Mass on Ash Wednesday and Palm Sunday because those are the two days of the year where you get something for free, even if that thing is a leaf or last year's leaf burned up on your forehead. <laughs> Because that's actually where the ashes come from. It's from last year's palms, and they burn them up, and then they use those, um, and then they're blessed um, again. The leaf's blessed, and then they burn it, and then they bless the ashes. Uh, okay, we've got the baby. She's in the car. You might hear her cooing. She just wanted to join me. So we're going to go to church now, and we're going to get our ashes, and we're going to pray for a good start to our lunch. Uh, and I think actually that that's all I had to say. So comment below if you're doing anything for Lent. I know that it's not just Catholics who celebrate, um, some other Protestant denominations, I think like Lutherans and Anglicans and stuff, um, also celebrate Lent, which is awesome. Um, it's kind of one of those like old church traditions that like a lot of, a lot of the less liturgical denominations like kind of have let it fall to the side uh, but I think it's a really great way to recenter yourself I always find Lent to be a very um, spiritually fulfilling and f growth filled um, period of the year and I definitely get a lot out of it um, just you know taking away the things in your life that are distracting you from God um, and allowing you to sort of focus on the things that actually matter um, it's it's always a good thing so you know even if you're not Catholic it's something that you could consider um, participating in you know it's not like we're gonna come and find you and, and try to baptize you or something um, if you just feel like you want to take a period of your life to focus on the things that matter um, in those 40 days before Easter are a great reminder to do that so we will see you, oh, I was going to say, yeah, if you, if you celebrate Lent or if you observe Lent, comment below and let me know what you're doing, if you're giving anything up, if you're taking on a new practice, um, or, you know, volunteering or whatever it is that you want to do during Lent, um, let me know. And like I said, I, I give up radio in the car and I'm also, um, drinking only water with meals. Um, sometimes I find like sometimes I like to give up something that I do all the time, like radio in the car. Other times I want to do, give up something that I do like frequently, but not all the time, um, because then it makes it like an extra challenge when that thing comes up. Um, because I, sometimes we'll drink water with meals, but sometimes I get the opportunity to have like a soda or something, and I really enjoy that. And having to give that up, even if it's not an everyday thing, is like a little bit extra of like a okay, yeah, and it's a reminder. Like, there's a reason you're doing this. So, I keep babbling. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.